Former National Security Advisor, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. and State Department official John Bolton said the quiet part out loud during an interview with CNN's Jake Tapper on Tuesday. Let's watch. I don't know that I agree with you to be to be uh, fair with all due respect. Uh, one doesn't have to be brilliant to attempt a coup. Uh, I disagree with that as somebody who has helped plan coup d'etat. Yeah. Not here, but you know, other places. Uh, it takes a lot of work and that's not what he did. It was just stumbling around from one idea to another. Ultimately, he did unleash the rioters at the Capitol. As to that, there's no doubt. Despite the backlash, Bolden doubled down on his comments yesterday, calling his detractors snowflakes. Well, I think there are a lot of snowflakes out there that don't understand what you need to do to protect the United States. Uh, I'm not going to get into specifics. I did write about Venezuela uh, in, in my memoir. Uh, and I think that any president that's not willing to do what it takes to protect the interests of the American people needs to have some, uh, some counseling. Joining us now to weigh in is host of Pushback, airing on the Gray Zone, Aaron Mate. Welcome back to Rising, Aaron. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. So what did you make of these comments? Uh, maybe it feels uh, uh, gratifying to hear Bolton just admit to something uh, he's <laughs> long been accused of uh, by, uh, well, probably by all three of us for the left libertarian alliance on this issue. <laughs> Well, it's an amazing moment, and Bolton has been open in the past about his role in overthrowing foreign governments. As he said, he writes in his book about trying to stage a coup in Venezuela under Trump beginning in 2019. But here he is making it plain that this is U.S. government policy in many places, not just in Venezuela. And there's what makes it even more hilarious is that he's also dispelling another obsession of the corporate media, which is that what Trump did on January 6th was something approaching a coup. Because the reason why we're still talking about January 6, 18 months later, even though Trump is gone and he's already been impeached for it, is because our media is addicted to Trump and needs to speak about him constantly. So here is John Bolton pointing out that actually this obsession you have on a riot was not a coup. And I know because I've done real coups. And those real coups, ironically, are coups that corporate outlets like CNN and Jake Tapper support and whitewash. Yeah. So. When Trump tried to overthrow the government of Venezuela by imposing a blockade, by organizing uh, a coup plot, trying to install this puppet Juan Guaido, people like Jake Tapper didn't care because that is considered normal in U.S. foreign policy. They want to make the issue about a riot at home while supporting coups abroad. And so in one comment, John Bolton blew all that up. Yeah, it's interesting, frankly, that it has gotten this much traction, given that it seems like an, an open secret in some ways. You know, I do remember a fairly recent Jen Psaki press conference where she said very blithely, you know, we don't do coups, America doesn't overthrow governments, and it, and it elicited a similar kind of reaction of skepticism from the left. But this seems to be a mainstream pushback against the idea that he would kind of openly say, of course we do coups. And, and we shouldn't miss that he was provoked to say this because he somehow felt insulted at the idea that only morons can do right, coups. Right, sloppy work. <laughs> right. He didn't want to, his craft was being impugned, right. really, is what it was. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really ridiculous, but I don't know, what do you make of the, the reaction in this moment? Are you surprised that so many, you know, mainstream figures seem to have, take, take issue with this? Well, Jake Tapper's response to Bolton, I think, perfectly encapsulates our media's approach to all this. Because first of all, if our media did its job, then John Bolton, every time he'd be interviewed, he'd be asked about his actual record. His record, not just in Venezuela, but also in Haiti in 2004, when a US-backed coup overthrew, for the second time, jean Bertrand Aristide, a priest who was elected overwhelmingly by Haiti's poor majority. So because of that, he was overthrown twice by the US. And John Bolton, I think, played a key role in the most recent one in 2004. So if we had an honest media, John Bolton would be asked about this constantly, but he's not. He's instead treated as some sort of serious figure that we should turn to to weigh in on matters such as democracy and protecting the US. When John Bolton's main job throughout his professional life has been to destroy countries abroad that stand in the way of US hegemony. So when John Bolton makes his admission to Jake Tapper, what does Jake do? He kind of jokes around with him and says, oh, I feel there's something you're not telling me, ha, ha, mm. ha. He doesn't impress him. You know, he, pre he, he doesn't say, okay, well, where else have you tried to overthrow governments and what did you do? It was a very sort of jovial exchange because that right there is the role of the U.S. media to treat John Bolton as if they're 
serious diplomats and not professional sadists who mm. design policies that destroy other countries that stand in the way of U.S. global dominance. Right. John Bolton was, I think, a reviled figure in the mainstream media for a long while. And then he he got the life hack, the upgrade. He turned on Trump, um, maybe, maybe for, you know, for legitimate reasons. Trump is something of a buffoon and then became a celebrity, uh, a celebrated media celebrity as this, you know, former Trump person who turns on Trump and now is, you know, welcome in mainstream circles and faces very little pushback for the policies he supported because he's willing to attack Trump. And that's all they want to hear. We're talking about one of the most dangerous characters, I think, in modern U.S. political history. When he was Call working under George, North Korea. <laughs> yes. And when he was working under George W. Bush, he oversaw the dismantling of a really important arms control treaty called the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. Uh, that allowed the U.S. to start building up these missile sites in Europe that they claim would protect Europe from Iranian missiles, which was a complete scam. The real aim was to put the U.S. in a better position to threaten Russia. And decisions like that help lead us onto the Cold War path that have led us to the war in Ukraine today. So John Bolton did that, and he comes back under Bush. He picks up where he left off. He dismantles another critical Cold War arms control treaty, the INF Treaty. And that treaty had eliminated an entire class of heavy offensive weapons and nuclear weapons. That allows both the U.S. and Russia to resume building those, and the U.S. even tests them. John Bolton oversees coups in Venezuela and Haiti. He got... In 2002, he forced the ouster of the head of the OPCW, Jose Bustani, because Jose Bustani at the time was standing in the way of the Bush administration's drive to invade Iraq. Bustani wanted to bring Iraq into the Chemical Weapons Convention. And what that would have done is subject Iraq to regular inspections, which could have seriously impeded the Bush administration's drive to war, because those inspections would have showed that the Bush administration's claims about Iraq having WMDs and chemical weapons were false. So John Bolton goes to the OPCW, Tells to Bustani, you have to resign, and we know where your kids live. Bustani's mm. spoken about this before publicly, including uh, with me in an interview. And uh, John Bolton succeeded. Bustani was ousted. He successfully intimidated the OPCW into ousting Bustani. That's his actual record. But as you say, because under Trump, when he came back, at the end, he was fired by Trump because they didn't get along. And he turned on Trump in the end. And when Democrats' first impeachment wasn't going so well over the, over the Ukraine situation, John Bolton broke out that he had some book coming out that would maybe confirm everything Democrats were saying because they had no direct evidence for their claims that Trump was trying to bully Ukraine into investigating Joe Biden and leveraging weapons sales uh, for that. And so he was a media darling. And then, of course, his book came out later on. and It didn't confirm anything of the sort. But the fact that he was willing to go against Trump on these narrow grounds made him a media hero. And that's why he's being charted back out now and being treated as a serious person and given this light pushback from people like Chick Tepper. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate your journalism and your uh, persistence in holding these figures' feet to the fire. And thank you for joining us today, Aaron. Thanks, Bree. Thank you. Team Rising joins us next. <laughs>